false center and bliss with false center bliss cannot happen first freedom is destroyed and with freedom you lose your center but that the center not that the center is destroyed it cannot be destroyed while you are alive it would be good if it was destroyed then you would be more at ease with yourself if you were totally false and there was no real center hidden within you you would be at ease there would be no conflict no anxiety no struggle when the false center and the real center is stayed together that creates the conflict the conflict comes into existence because the real center remains there it remains at the center and just on the periphery an unreal center is created because of your egocentric identities conditionings and other things between these two centers a constant struggle anxiety and tension is created this must be transformed and there is only one way the false must disappear and the real must be given its place you must be regrounded into your center into your being otherwise you will be in anguish the false center can disappear but the real center cannot disappear unless you die while you are alive the real will be there the society can do only one thing it can push it deep down and it can create a barrier so that even you become unconscious of it can you remember any moment in your life when you were spontaneous when you just lived in the moment when you were living yourself and you were not following someone else self remembering can help in transforming mind only when you are regrounded it will give you again roots into your center with self remembering you forget everything other than yourself the society the mad world around you the family the relationships everything you are forgetting you are simply remembering that you are this remembrance is not given by the society to you this remembrance will detach you from all that is peripheral and if you can remember you will fall back to your own being your own center the ego will be there just on the periphery but you will be able to see it now like any other objects you will be able to observe it and once you become capable of observing your ego the false center you will never be false again you need your false center because you have to live in a society which is false so you live only to that extent false that may be necessary for survival you will be able to use it now but you will never be identified with it using and being identified is two are two different thing it will be instrumental now you will live on your center in your center and you will be able to use the false as a social convenience a conviction but you will not be identified with it now you know you can be spontaneous and free it is significantly it is significantly self remembering that transforms you because it gives you the opportunity to be yourself again and to be oneself is the ultimate and to be oneself 
is the absolute, the peak of all possibilities and potentialities is the divine or whatsoever you want to call it. God is not somewhere in the past. He is your potentiality. You have heard it said again and again that God is the Father. More significantly, He is going to be your Son, not the Father, because He is going to evolve out of you. So it can be said now, God the Son, because the Father is in the past and Son is in the future. You can become divine and God can be born out of you. If you are authentically yourself, you have taken the basic step, you are going towards divinity, the total freedom as a slave. You can not, you cannot move to that. As a slave, as a false person, there is no path leading towards the divine. To the ultimate possibility, the ultimate flowering of the being. First, you must be centered in yourself. Self-remembering helps and only self-remembering helps and nothing else can transform you. With the false center, there is no growth. Only accumulation is possible. And remember the distinction between accumulation and growth. With the false center, you can accumulate wealth, knowledge and anything else without any growth. Growth happens only to the real center. Growth is not an accumulation. You are not burdened by growth. Accumulation is a burden. You can know many things without knowing. You can know much about love without knowing love. Then it is an accumulation. If you know love, then it is a growth. You can know much about love with the false center and that is what everybody does. You can love only with the real center. Real centers can mature. The false center can get bigger and bigger without any growth, without any maturity. The false is just a cancerous growth, an accumulation, burdening you like a disease. But you can do one thing. You can change your focus totally from the false. You can move your eyes to the real. This is what is meant by self-remembering. Whatsoever you are doing, first remember yourself that you are. Do not force, do not forget this at all. This very remembering will give an authentic reality to whatsoever you are doing. If you are loving, first remember that you are. Otherwise, you will be loving the person from the false center. And from the false center, you can only pretend. But you cannot love. If you are praying, first remember that you are Otherwise, the prayer is going to be just nonsense, just a deception. And you are not deceiving anyone else. Instead, you are deceiving yourself. Love is disappearing from your life because without knowing who you are, you, are, you start loving. In simple words, your love will be authentic only if you have known yourself first. First, remember that you are 
and this remembering that I am must become so basic that it follows you like a shadow. Then even while asleep it will enter and you will remember. If you can remember the whole day and it enters even in your dreams and sleep and you will know that I am. The day you can know even in your sleep that you are, you are grounded in your center. Now the false is no more. It is not a burden to you. You can use it now. It is instrumental. You are not a slave to it. You have become the master. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita that while everyone is asleep, the yogi, the awakened one is awake. He is not, it is not meant that the yogi does not sleep. Remember, sleep is biological, bodily necessity. What is meant is that remembering. What is meant that he remembers even in his sleep that he is, that I am. Sleep is on the periphery. Sleep is on the periphery. In the center, the remembrance is there. The yogi remembers this even while he is asleep. While you are not remembering yourself, while you are even awake, you are walking on the street, and you are not remembering that you are. Try this remembering. <coughs> Try this remembering and you will feel a change of quality. Try to remember that you are. Suddenly a new lightness comes to you. The heaviness disappears and you become weightless. You are thrown off the false center to the real one again, but it is difficult and arduous because we are so ingrounded, so much grounded in the falls that it will take time. But no transformation is possible without self-remembering becoming effortless for you. You simply start remembering yourself. Otherwise, no transformation is possible. Raman started with this self-remembering. He used to tell his disciples, try to find out who am I? Who am I? The answer to this question, who am I, is self-remembering. Am I a body? Am I a mind? Or something beyond the body and mind? That's the beginning. And self-remembrance is the beginning of the process of transformation. Enough for now.